What's up there? This is Mr. Mike Kaufman, and in this video, I'm going to give you a tour of some of the features in Google Hangouts Meet, as well as the additional features added with the advanced version that Google then has just recently given out uh, to its different uh, domains. A great tool for distance learning. It allows you to connect with your students, to allow students to connect with each other, uh, to keep that face-to-face -face live interaction going. And without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, so the first feature I want to go over is how to attach documents from Drive or locally from your desktop to a Google Hangouts Meet to have your participants be able to access files that you want to share with them. To do that, I'm going to create an event. I'm going to add conferencing. And then I'm going to click on more options. From there, what I want to do is go down to the description and click add attachment. From here, you can either add an attachment from Google Drive. You can also then upload one directly from your desktop. And that's it. Click Save. All right, so now that the Hangout Meet has been set up, let's take a look at where to find attachments that have been added. To do that, you just go down to the bottom left-hand corner, and you can see right there from the attachment icon that there is an attachment that's been added to the Meet session. To do that, click the pop-up menu click on attachments, and you could access them right there. Again, this is the same for you as the person who uh, created the meet or for any of the participants who have joined. Now, another feature on that pop-up window is details, right, to be able to help share the meet with a person to have them join. You can copy the join info uh, right there, especially useful if you're having someone joining in through phone. All right, let's take a look at some other features. The next thing we want to take a look at is how to right, record your meet. To do that, you click on the three dot menu and click record meeting. Notice it's going to ask for consent. It is important that you set up protocols uh, for your students and you review the basics of how to act appropriately with enemy. And this includes how you as a teacher are going to be recording and it should be done always with their permission. Once you click accept, it's gonna take a second to start and you'll know it started recording when it turns red. Now, to stop recording, all you do is go back to that three-dot menu and click Stop Recording. It's going to confirm whether you want to do it. When you do, click Stop Recording. And in just a minute, we'll show you where that file gets saved and how to access it to then share it with students later. The next option we want to cover is how to present your screen to students. To do that, you click the button Present Now. You're going to get two choices. One is to present your entire screen which means literally whatever it is that you're seeing, that's what your students are gonna see. The other feature, which I highly recommend, is presenting just a window. To do that, click it, and then choose the window that you wanna present. In this case, I only have one option. I'll select it and click Share. Now this is an especially useful feature is if you are going to then present a presentation or go over a website with students. Now, I know that my screen's being shared because that little pop-up window on the bottom is telling me that. Now, for example, I can now click present on my presentation. All right, now let's take a look at the student view. So flip over here. Now the student gets to see not only the presentation that I'm presenting, but then they also get a video of me. Now, I think this is an important feature because in a distance learning situation, you still want to have the ability to connect your students. You want them to be able to see your face, read your facial expressions, and so forth. So this feature allows your students to see both the presentation and you, the teacher. All right, let's go back to the teacher view. Now to stop sharing your screen, you, can, you simply click stop sharing. You can then escape from your presentation and go back to your meet. The next feature I wanna cover is being able to view who is inside your Google Meet. To do that, you can click on the people icon in the top right hand corner. And in this case, there's two people. There's myself, as well as then student A. Now let's say you wanna click on a student. You then have a couple options. You can pin the student to the screen to make them the star or the focus of the Hangout. You can also mute a student, right? So if they're being distracting or just adding in unnecessary background noise, you can mute it. Now note, if the participant has muted themselves, which in this case they have, you cannot unmute them, right? That's for privacy issues. Now, if you do mute them, you can then unmute them yourself. You can also remove a student by clicking the Remove button. The next feature I want to cover is the chat. 
right? The chat is a great way to encourage your students to communicate without all of them speaking up at once. So for example, if there's 20 people in the Hangout and someone has to ask a question, they can simply type their question in here. And then other students can either answer the question by typing it in, or you can then see the, the notification pop up in yours and then answer the question yourself. It's also a great way to share resources. So for example, I can copy a link to the presentation, paste it in there, send it out, and that way students have access. The next feature I wanna cover is the different layout views. To do that, click on the three dot menu and click change layout. You can leave it out on auto, in which case Google is going to switch the view to the best one that it sees fit. You can also go sidebar, where then all your participants are up on the side. You can also change it to tiled right, or spotlight. Again, whatever you think is best for your viewing. Now, the last thing I wanna do is show you how to access then the recording. To access the recording of the Meet, you can do so in one of several ways. One, as the creator of the calendar event, you will get an email with the video directly to you. You can open up the email, access the video, or open it in Drive. The second place you can find recordings is inside Drive. Google Meet has automatically set up a folder for you named Meet Recordings. This is to help keep all your recordings nice and organized. To access it, open up the folder, and then you can share the video with direct with specific people or get a shareable link. Now note, when you went to stop your recording, a dialog popped up that said a link to the recording will be added to the event and everyone in the guest list. The guest list means people in the event that were invited. In this case, I invited no one to the guest list. They entered the meet strictly through the link. Therefore, they will not receive an email of the video. However, a video will be added to the event right there. Students can then access the video by going back into your calendar, or you can share the link with them through email, through Classroom, or any other way.